Hello Horror Hounds, the self-service checkout of movies is telling us to scan our next item because it's time to talk about the fourth movie in the improbable Scanners franchise. Uh, this film written, produced and directed by Pierre David who was the producer of uh, David Cronenberg's original Scanners uh, and the two sequels, The New Order and The Takeover. So I guess for the Scanner franchise, Pierre David is what Mustafa Akkad is to the Halloween franchise. Got to keep that flame alive, Pierre. And he gifted us in 1994 with uh, the remarkable concept and the equally remarkably titled, we forget Wolf Cop. We've got Scanner Cop. Sam Stasiak is a rookie cop with the LAPD, and he's also a scanner. Scanner? Cop? See, now the title makes sense. A series of murders begins, with seemingly upright citizens suddenly flipping out and killing cops. Could Sam's scanner abilities help crack the case and save his cop buddies? No. But just kidding, of course they can. Daniel Quinn plays our hero, Stasiak, maybe in, 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 in this instalment a little weak-chinned as the lead, but really that speaks to Stasiak's character at the time. A rookie cop, uncertain of how he can handle his new job that he's always dreamed of since a kid, uncertain about using his scanner abilities or even being known as a scanner, especially seeing how as a kid he saw his dad uh, driven insane by his uh, scanner gift, eventually killing him. But um, if you doubt Quinn uh, as an actor in this, trust that he is playing the part. Sam Stasiak in, and we'll get there in the next video, Scanner Cop 2 is much further along in his development. And I actually think it does Daniel Quinn justice if you watch Scanner Cop and Scanner Cop 2 uh, back to back, but here he's very much the fresh faced rookie hero thrown in at the deep end, unsure, having to fight in a situation way out of his depth. If you're going to do a Scanner movie, you're going to need a good baddie. And for the first time in a Scanner movie, uh, the baddie isn't an evil scanner. Now, a point of order here, the main baddie in the New Order wasn't a scanner, but he used scanners to get done what he, he wanted. So the real standout baddie in Scanners 2 was an evil scanner. Um, here we get a villain of an, an altogether better B-movie pedigree. The indomitable Richard Lynch here plays Carl Glock a disgraced doctor who was arrested after performing weird experiments on people and trying to form his own cult. You know, the usual. If the name Richard Lynch doesn't immediately ring bells for you, just Google it. The second you see his face, you go, oh yeah, that guy. Cool. Um, Glock has got a grudge against cops and um, a Manchurian candidate style uh, of turning ordinary citizens into cop killers. We also get uh, Brian James, he of Blade Runner and House 3, Max Jenke in House 3. He has a blink and you'll miss it role. Uh, it's a cameo as the head of the asylum that Rich, Richard Lynch's character has escaped from. A real missed opportunity. B-movie and genre fans um, will watch this film and scream, how could you uh, have a movie where you fail to get Brian James and Richard Lynch in uh, a team-up? It would have been too good uh, to be true. Just, just jink the script a little bit to have him in on Glock's plan and, and help him escape. A wasted opportunity, but as Fleetwood Mac once so wisely said, oh well. Pierre David has decided to break with Scanner film tradition and set his movie in a very definitely real and named place, Los Angeles. But one of the other traditions that he has maintained are the uh, inconsistent scanner skills. Once again, we're a little woolly on what a scanner can and can't do and how much their abilities affect them. I will forgive the inconsistency though, because in Scanner Cop we get to see our hero scanning a dying suspect into hell itself. 
it doesn't play as good as it sounds, but the concept is so out there and so bonkers. This dying suspect has information that he needs, so he follows her mind down into the afterlife and hell, where they have a scanner battle in the afterlife where she tries to kill his soul so she can come back and take over his body. So uh, we've got an amazing title. We've actually got a really pretty good concept, I think, and I suspect that these scanner cop movies, maybe with their made for TV vibe to them, was perhaps even a proof of concept for a, a, a potential TV series. Who in the mid 90s wouldn't have wanted to tune in week in, week out to scan a cop? Right at the top of the film, we are treated to uh, having Sam's uh, crazy scanner dad who's gone off the deep end, his hallucinations uh, become visualized and realized. He's off his meds, ephemeral, the scanner suppressant, and, and in his head is the full clamoring noise of hundreds of voices from the people all around him. So far, so usual for a scanner's flick, except that we see some of those voices as he understands them as little heads literally busting out of his own skull. I mean, it's it's insane, it's glorious, it's ludicrous. These tiny little heads. Think sort of Freddy's chest of souls, except they're popping out of some dude's skull. The script is lazy, but the film is fun. Unfortunately, now we're so well versed in uh, police procedural movies and a slew of TV films that you will watch this and you like pretty much from the outset you'll go so hang on a minute police procedure is way out the window uh, uh, due diligence is way out the window just just getting a kid killing his dad and then saying well hey you're going to come and live with us now without involving social services or anything like that. Um, that aspect is ludicrous. The script is purely designed to get characters from A to B to get to the next bonkers bit. Um, every line of dialogue from every cop is straight out of the generic cop dialogue textbook, which is, I'm assuming, a real thing. Uh, there's only one good line of really zingy dialogue in the entire film. I'm going to spoil it for you now because it's quite a doozy. There's sort of quasi love interest asks Sam Stasiak, can I buy you dinner, officer? And he says, I've got a gun. We'll eat for free. That's as good as it gets, dialogue-wise, but there's enough nutty scanniness going on uh, that I really enjoyed the film. You can cry hypocrite if you like, because yes, I slammed Scanners 3 for being really trashy, and that is zany, nutty scanner nonsense as well. I just warmed to this more, and Maybe it's helped by the fact that there's a direct sequel and Sam Stazet becomes the only returning character in um, uh, the Scanners franchise. So I got to warm to him a little and maybe it put ideas in my mind of, uh, of him recurring in a TV show. But um, yeah, Scanner Cop, it does what it says on the cover.